Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome. Today's topic is safety engineering and accident causing mechanism. Today we will discuss whatever we have conceptualized in the past four lectures and put them under the umbrella of safety engineering. And then I will discuss different issues related to accident causing mechanisms. In fact, accident causing mechanism is a part of safety engineering. So, safety engineering and accident causing mechanisms by per se it is not that a two distinct topics just to tell that today also accident causing mechanisms will be discussed. So, that sense I kept this uh, title. So, whatever you have learned so far, we will put under industrial safety engineering. Then common features of plant with high risk, the negative interactions between humans and plants and taxonomy of negative interactions uh, will be covered in 30 to 40 minutes of time. And uh, I have heavily borrowed all those things from um, the book written by uh, Kumamoto and Hanley, which is probabilistic risk assessment for scientists and engineers. Except the first one, industrial safety engineering, the last three three items taken from this book. So let us see first what is safety engineering. So. Mm, you see what is given in the slide, so many things, hazard identification, risk assessment, accident causation, hazard triangle, risk control systems, bow tie, all those are coming under PTD, prevention through design. So, you know what is PTD, PTD is a life cycle design concept where the hazards that may occur along the life cycle of a system or the process or a product you manufacture or you install. So, the all those hazards to be thought of at the design stage and proper interventions may be design, redesign, options controls must be put into place. I told what is hazard, hazard identification and followed by hazard triangle. Then using hazard triangle I showed you that how accident causation can be done using safety domain ontology. And then I said that there will be risk, individual societal risk and there is a risk assessment process. And uh, we will discuss different hazard identification techniques and analysis techniques. Primarily under risk assessment, we will be discussing about fault tree analysis and event tree analysis. These two collectively gives you another tool called bow tie. And this bow tie is a beautiful tool for implementing PTD. And risk control systems also you have seen. So, that means all those things during design stage you have to identify and you have to put risk barriers in proper place for proper job, for proper activities at proper time primarily at the upstream so that you will get the fruit on uh, your work during the life cycle of the um, I can say the process or the system. Apart from this, there is accident causation. Uh, accident causation leads to accident prediction and classification. 
this is coming under basically safety analytics analytics and then you see that risk control system leads to identification of leading and lagging indicators and that also helps in improving the performance of the system by monitoring and control and there are a lot of risk based decisions. I intentionally put this under uh, safety engineering but not under PTD, but there is overlap and one cannot be separated from the other. So, you may be interested to say why not the prevention through design approach will also um, consider these two. So, in that case I cannot say no, but traditionally what PTD will do, PTD will give you that the base design in terms of safety during the design phase only. Okay. And these are the things basically leading to leading to monitoring and control of the system. If I know the leading indicators, lagging indicators, then definitely it will be it will be easy for for the safety professionals or the safety management team to to go for better maintenance of the system or better protection and mitigation efforts to be in place. So, as such you can say this is also under PTT and then why not these based decisions, these based decisions why not there this one all those things. In fact, under industry 4.0, industry 4.0 I think all those things are under under prevention through design and under safety engineering. Okay. So, this is what is the um, what is the core of the safety engineering, but again you see this is in the abstraction level it it subject specific it context specific issues will be dealt separately. For example, if it is a machine related things then the definitely the mechanical engineering issues will come in between everywhere. If it is a chemical process then chemical engineering issues will be governing the things. If it is a software human com, uh, process computer interface in the interface design the computer science uh, engineering, electronics engineering all those things seem to come into consideration. So, ultimately what I mean to say that this is a subject which is multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary whatever way you can say fitting to everything. So, so as a result uh, it is very difficult to satisfy every discipline people in terms of these contents, but please keep in mind this, uh, this, is, this is basically the road map, the blueprint that is to be adopted if you are really interested to do safety engineering or the rather industrial safety engineering for the process or the facility and to save people at work or during work. Okay. I hope that it makes sense to you that the all the all the issues what we have discussed so far put into a put into a framework under a under umbre, under a I can say umbrella. Okay. So we will try to give justification to all those things as much as possible. Now, this is another very very important concept when we talk about accident causing mechanism. So, people must understand this is a very important concept that common features, common features, common features of plants with high risk. Okay. You will find out the common features are this. This I have taken from the book written by Koma Moto and Hen Le, probabilistic risk assessment for engineers and scientists. Physical containment, stabilization of unstable phenomena, 
लार्ज साइज न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी वैरायटी ऑफ कंपोनेंट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड स्ट्रक्चर इनर्शिया ह्यूज कॉन्सिक्वेंस स्ट्रिक्ट सोशल डिमांड फॉर सेफ्टी सो ऑल दोज थिंग्स आर कॉमन फीचर्स इफ यू फॉर एनी हाई रिस्क प्लान यू थिंक ऑफ कोल माइन यू यू थिंक ऑफ ए न्यूक्लियर प्लांट यू थिंक ऑफ ऑयल एंड गैस इंस्टॉलेशन यू थिंक ऑफ स्टील मेकिंग यू थिंक ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन सो वेर एवर देर इज देर इज हाई रिस्क ह्यूज हेजार्ड इनवॉल्व सो व्हाट विल हैपन यू विल फाइंड आउट दैट योर डिजाइन डिजाइन कंसिडरेशन विल बी इंक्लूसिव ऑफ ऑल दोज थिंग्स ओके सो दिस थिंग्स and particularly from the stabilization of unstable phenomena point of view we want to explain this if you are an expert engineer working in the field then you will be able to find out all those things if you are in stud if you are a student then you you have to follow some examples and get the concepts and in some case you prepare so that at least you get uh, the meaning of all those things so if i say that for plant with high risk there will be two things one is the challenges another one is the damages so all hazards initiating mechanisms these are basically challenges and then what will the target and threat the damage to target is the that is what is the what is i can say the threat is the damage it will it will create problem now these challenges are inherent to the plant because we deal with hazards it's a it's a complicated structure it's a large size it it may be a new technology it may so happen that you have basically adapted Uh, another new technology and inertia is playing a role so so many things ultimately makes your your work very much challenging so then when you see the your system that whether my system is in a position to to battle with the risk or the hazards then and then these are the these are the these are the few classes one is normal control system to my understanding normal control system means any system you develop it has few purposes one of this production is very important or slash operation then the production definitely quality production then the with there will be must be safety hmm so there there can be more and at the top of the business level it is basically profit but whatever may be we will start with this production or an operation that is what i am saying the normal function normal function so the system is designed to perform the normal function in such a manner that the desired production or the intended operations can be carried out so this is the minimum requirement for a plan to produce something do some work all those things are coming under normal control system okay so with reference to a case you just think of um um your body the internal parts the brain all those things for what purpose this is basically you will live healthy you perform your work okay so then in that case the musculoskeletal and the the cardiovascular and other system and the brain system 
this will have been the sufficient. But not only this, we have protective part also the skin and, uh, and other things. So, that means this, this will come under safety systems. Okay. But it is better if I go for a example. So, before uh, coming to um, this normal control system again, let me go to sorry the example here. This example I have taken from Komamoto's book. This is pressure tank system. The system shown in the figure 1 discharges gas from a reservoir into a pressure tank. The reservoir gas through pump to pressure tank. Okay. So, reservoir pressure tank. The switch is normally closed. This switch is normally closed. Pumping cycle is initiated, pumping cycle initiated by operator who manually resets the timer, there is a timer. It basically talks about that how long the pump will run. The uh, once the operator resets the timer, the timer contact gets closed, timer's contact closes and pumping starts. Means electricity or power to this pump will will be initiated and ultimately the pumping start here. So, now when pumping start what happen this gas will be fed to this tank. Well, before any over pressure condition exist the timer times out. Well, before over pressure condition exist so over pressure condition timer will times out before the designed that maximum pressure. Timer times out and timer contact opens, timer contact open, power get disconnected, pump stop. So, current to the pump cuts off and pumping ceases to prevent tank rupture due to over pressure. This is the uh, that safety issue tank rupture due to over pressure. If the timer contact does not open by chance timer this time is elapsed contact does not open. The operator is instructed to observe the pressure gauge uh, there is an alarm if, if the pressure is beyond the certain limit alarm will, will, will activate and operator will know and it will he, will he or she will come and see the pressure gauge also. So, the operator is instructed to observe the pressure gauge and open the manual switch thus causing the pump to stop. Even if the timer and operator both fail, suppose this contact fail, operator also fail, over pressure can be relieved by relief valve, there is relief valve relieved. After each cycle the over compressed gas is discharged by opening the valve and then closing it before the next, next cycle begins. Okay. So, once it is completely filled up as per the design pressure, then what will happen? The discharge bulb will open and every all when everything all gases will be discharged, then again new cycle will start. At the end of the operating cycle, the operator is instructed to verify the operability of the pressure gauge observing and the decrease in the tank pressure as the discharge bulb is opened. To simplify the analysis, we assume that the tank is depressurized before the cycle begin. The pressure gauge may fail due to during the new cycle even if the operability was correctly checked by the operator at the end of the last cycle. The gauge can fail before a new cycle if the operator content inspection cell. Okay. If the purpose is just to feed the, feed the gas to this tank then you see what is required a connect a power connection here pump will start and then gas will come here and so what happened timer then and the pump switch these things are is a required minimum requirement ok. So, if this is the case now we want to understand 
what are the normal conditions controls here the normal controls timer contact switch operator timer contact switch operator obviously pump will be there pump related controls are also there now what happen if normal means so long the pressure suppose the design pressure is this this is the mean p mean and this is p max so long it is within this particularly from safety point of view this one p max so long it is this fine this is under normal but there because the pump is getting command from many things so there can be failure of so many components are there so what will happen there will be a case when that your pressure may exceed to this side so that means what happens some emergency safety system should work so for this simple system emergency safety we are writing the pressure gauge alarm relief valve sometimes discharge valve also although discharge valve basically discharges the uh, the gas to the utility equipment but under situation it can be used also okay so that is what we are saying that that when you go for a, a, a any system and you definitely find out these things normal controls emergency controls and what will happen if you think this in much bigger scale lot of pipe gas and all other things are there so what will happen these two are not sufficient you required to go for some other things also okay so from normal control means the designed parameters they must work within the design range the system must have the facility to do this purpose so long the so long the system parameters are within this design range this is normal control and you must know that what are the what are the component what are the sub system sub sub system and up to component level those are required to work fully for the function of the for proper functioning of the system but as you have seen that every activity has a duration as such any system is basically having lot of risk and 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 there are some plants or some system which are very high risk so particularly for those high risk systems the layer of protection will be much more okay for example if i if we talk about that the gas when when over pressure con, con, condition occurs after certain pressure tank rupture may take place now depending on the on on, on the amount involved here it will create havoc so there if there is a tank, tank rupture there will be gas coming out suppose if there there are another one there are lot of valves pipes joints so everywhere there is a possibility that that gas will come out so when gas comes out i do have a do you have a system which ultimately Uh, that that comes out gas coming out gas or the uh, or the undesirable one that the that, that uh, hazard uh, that that can be physically contained somewhere okay maybe you have very high chimney at the end and there is a flare it will be burn and going to the upper atmosphere that may no, may ultimately not make the people the property and the environment immediate environment getting affected then this is coming under physical containment for example nuclear power plant you nuclear waste this is a very hazardous material so what you you, you required to do the the waste material to be stored much beneath the earth crust much lower so that even that the nuclear that uh, rays and other things they will they will generated that will be there only it will not be exposed to to the uh, society 
to the environment, to the nearby people, they will not be affected. Another example for physical containment will may be that fire sealing in mines. Suppose you are when you are dealing with underground mines, so maybe with caving methods means the roof will come down. So there will be uh, there will be exposed coal which when mixed with oxygen uh, catches fire, and then if you make a fire ceiling because the caved out area is basically of no zone, no work zone area because they are coal made you have already extracted. I mean something like this. You are going somewhere. You are going, and then you are here. You are coming back, and this particular top portion it is caved and collapsed. Here, suppose your um, fire take place. If you can put masonry brick wall here, so that fire will not with sufficient strength and the dimension it will not come out. Okay, so that is basically fire ceiling. So this is fire physical containment. Okay, now if if you think of a uh, a big uh, steel plant that coke oven gas coming through pipe suppose there is there must be some way to uh, to uh, the discharge some of the uh, gases in such a manner that it will ultimately will not affect the environment obviously not the people and property surrounded so this is what is physical containment so when you go for any uh, high risk system you will find out that normal conditions, emergency control, normal control, physical containment may be there. These two must, this may be there. Now on site and off site countermeasures is another issue which is very important. What is on site and off site countermeasures? On site and off site countermeasures mean suppose you just think of suppose this is my this is my plant. There are many people working here. If any anything happen here, then then what are the measures? When accident has taken place, tank rupture has taken place. So what are the measures you have so that you will save the people, save the property? So those measures are on site. Means where the accident has taken place. Okay. For example, two two, two passenger trains collision. That, that the effect will be on site effect only because the two train where they collide the two train gets damaged people will be injured death all those things. So that means there are certain hazards which if occurs their effect will be will be um, localized to that place where accident has taken place. So for that what are the on site may countermeasures you have persons fall from height. So, uh, do, there must be emergency uh, that is ambulance or emergency uh, ambulance system. So, that immediately the person will be taken to hospital or person working at height suddenly he medical fitness deteriorated he must you, your system you, he will be he will be brought to the ground level and then again emergency will system will be there uh, on, on site measures will be there so that he will be quickly shifted to doctor to the hospital this for example there can be many more now now if uh, here what is offset countermeasure suppose there is a rupture now this gas is a toxic gas and the rupture this hole is more bigger one huge volume uh, amount is coming so, in that case what happened locality will be affected. If it is the gas is carbon monoxide in some case even that small volume will come out that will basically create havoc to the people. So, what do you mean that your system has certain hazards which not only cause on site uh, effect, but it may, may cause off site effect out of your plant effect. If your on site is this one this is your target area the neighboring departments will be off site but if on site if you consider the plant as a whole then society at large is off site so you you must know that that the that you as as you are working with hazardous system you must know that this hazard should not should not affect the locality the society 
So, you must have sufficient protection measures, these are offside emergency counter measures. Okay. Suppose your plant produces lot of gases, for example. So, along the periphery of the plant must have the detection system, gas detection system. Whenever you find out some gas is detected, immediately evacuation of the people who are going to be affected. So many issues are important. We cannot forget the effect of that union carbide, Bhopal gas tragedy. Till now, people are suffering. So, it is a very big thing to happen and just by saying uh, few lines is not saving the people. It you have to be you have to design it in such a manner that that this can be possible. Accidents are predictable, so it can it is also preventable. Okay, so these are the few things because suppose you are asked to de redesign your system for safety improvement. Then first thing is that you understand the system in detail and find out that all the controls are there or not. If something is missing, you have to immediately install that one and redesign in this manner. This is a good concept. This will help you in design and redesign. Then I will come to the negative interactions between human and plants. Here the basic concept is that any plant, any system you consider, there will be three things, at least three things, human, machine, environment. And human affect machine, machine may affect environment, environment may affect machine, environment may affect human, environment a machine also can affect human. So, that means, there is interactions between all the components. So, those interactions can be positive and negative also and it is possible, it is required. Suppose a crane operator pushing some button where the, the, the load will be transformed from one place to another that is means interacting with the control there, this is a positive interaction. So, done, but independently if you push a separate button which is not basically transferring, maybe it is basically lifting it further, which is undesirable and maybe somebody will be hit, then it is negative interaction. So, similarly, the, uh, the machine should display that, that what is the status of it, if it display wrongly, the operator may take wrong action. So, now, <clears throat> now when you are working in a hot and humid environment, so your body must be acclimatized to that environment and that you cannot work under heat stress for several hours. So, that means the environment effect on body and in, sa in return what will happen uh, that means you will negatively interact with the uh, machine and collectively there will be there will be problem in the sense uh, lot of in undesired incidents will take place. So, those interactions are classified under unsafe act, human injured himself, abnormal plant state or unsafe conditions, abnormal plant states are caused by human errors, human errors and injuries are caused by plant, accidents and are have harmful consequences to the environment, negative environmental factors like this. So, if you if you investigate any of the any accident, if you find out the victim himself is responsible, that may be unsafe act. The condition is responsible unsafe condition abnormal plant state. It may so happen that abnormal plant state is is caused by the human errors. Human error is very important one that I have not talked about under safety engineering that concept, but please keep in mind human error is also a very, very important one. Okay. So, that means, you have to find out that what are the different ways those negative interactions can take place. 
and those in negative interactions shouldn't happen. One is that hazard initiative mechanism, then accident, and negative interaction. Initiative mechanism, which is leading to uh, leading to um, your bad state here, accident. There, the interfaces are also responsible. So that needs to be considered also. Okay. So some classifications are given. Uh, so what what we will see that uh, how those negative interactions can take place. That basically this is one example where we, we are basically trying to say something happens, then followed by something happen, followed by something happen, then finally end result will take place. But there are many ways that parallel and series conditions will will happen. Here, here basically one is the root cause that is you require to understand, two indirect cause of event 4, three direct cause of event 4, three main cause of event 6 and B and A they are supplementary. Suppose B is supplementary cause of event 6. So, so, you have to find out all those things because if you understand the ontology part there, I think that will help you in developing this also. Now, how do you do it? So, Kumamoto and Hanley book has given you that there will be Y classification, there can be how classification, why classification, when classification, where classification. Actually, there are 5 W and 1 H, what, where, when, why and how is there. So, how, when, where, why, what and who, another one is who. So, who, what happened, who are involved where it has happened, when it has happened, why it has happened, how it has happened, all those things you have to understand from negative interaction point. Once you know the negative interactions, you have to ask all those questions. That is why why classification that emphasis that the cause, how emphasizes primarily observational facts, when actually basically talk about the time and where the places locations ok and then who I told you the responsible person and what what actually happened what happened negative interaction happened. So, there are many ways uh, that uh, any accident, any accident situations can be um, can be analyzed. So, it is endless game. So, what we, do, we will do therefore, we will will give you some important tools and techniques, some important examples, some important cases all through the uh, through the lectures and some tutorial, some kind of mathematics also will be there. So, that it will be a, it will be a descriptive and mathematical combination and you will one way you will understand the concept, the qualitative things, other way you will understand the uh, the quantitative part. So, both mixing uh, together uh, will give you much better understanding. So, uh, I hope that uh, you have understood uh, the concept, key concepts, the different terms and terminologies, the issues, the safety engineering overall gamut of safety engineering and all those things. So, this is what is the uh, end of our introductory lecture uh, that is the first week lecture that uh, just knowing the uh, totality of the of this particular industrial safety engineering codes, uh, but not in in depth in breadth. Okay. Hence, next lecture onwards, what will happen? We will go to specific tools and techniques 
we will give you the what is this and how it is to be done with cases and this subject being a um, complicated subject uh, and also it, 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 it varies from discipline to discipline from understanding point of view from implementation point of view so you have to be very very careful okay thank you very much